All right, folks, wel welcome again to One Million Cup. Um, um, it's a free program that is designed to educate, engage, and inspire entrepreneurs, as uh, the uh, video uh, showed. Um, every week, uh, One Million Cup meetings occur in about 180 locations around the country. Um, aspiring entrepreneur entrepreneurs and business owners who have companies that are less than five years old uh, can apply to present at, at a meeting, and we invite you to do so. In order to do that, uh, just uh, um, Google One Million Cups Lehigh Valley and apply, and we certainly um, uh, hope that uh, someone new here at the group uh, may decide to do that at some time in the future, or anyone on this call that hasn't presented yet. Um, the goal of One Million Cup meeting is very simple. Um, you communicate to the audience what it is you're doing, um, your current challenges um, you're facing, and in return, the audience provides uh, simple feedback uh, to you. Um, the format of the, of the meeting is uh, also simple. We give you 10 minutes to tell us uh, about, you know, to have a presentation about your business. And after that 10 minutes, uh, we open it up to a question and answer session. Um, today, uh, we're kind of going a little off course. Uh, we have a special guest today, uh, and that's Raja. Uh, who will be talking about the uh, Center of Innova Innovation and Entrepreneurship um, there at uh, Northampton Community Collar, uh, co uh, College on the South Side. Um, with that, I'm going to let uh, you take over, Raj. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Matt. And uh, first of all, good morning and welcome uh, to all of you at One Million Cups. I know most of you. Um, and it has always been our privilege uh, you know, to host the One Million Cup uh, with a great organizing uh, committee. So a couple of, uh, so Sean Brandel, who is the director of our Fab Lab, is also going to be joining me uh, for the presentation. So, uh, you know, he's my, he's my partner in crime here. Another person that's also on the call today is Amy Rossell. Uh, Amy is, is kind of like the, she is the engine behind the Fab Lab. So uh, has been with the Fab Lab for a number of years. So Amy, it's great to uh, have you uh, join this presentation at, um, today. Got a short presentation. So Sean and I have got a short, a short presentation, about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, and one thing that we wanted to share with you today is we keep on gauging the question, right? What is the CIE, the Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship? What can we do there as a community? Fab Lab, what are the capabilities of the Fab Lab? And I, we keep on hearing this word that it's a hidden resource. It's kind of like it's hidden gem that some of us are not really aware of. Um, so we thought that this would be a good time to uh, tell you a little bit more about who we are, what we do, what are some of our programs, and then and then a talk with you of how we can uh, you know, better provide you or better serve you better. Uh, and is there anything new that we can also add to our portfolio? So this is more like an informational session uh, along, with, uh, along with our uh, Q&A at the end, which I think uh, is always so positive about this event. So, what I'm, so I'm going to share my screen with you. We've got a short presentation, about 10 minutes, and then we'll get into the Q&A. Okay, can you all see my presentation? Good? Okay, great. Let me put it in a slideshow mode here. There we go. All right. Um, so first of all, um, a, a question that we keep on getting is, uh, where are we located? Right. We 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 have been around you know for a while. So as you know, North Hampton Community College has three different locations. We are, we have got our main campus in Bethlehem Township. Then we have got our Fowler Center uh, in South Bethlehem, downtown Bethlehem. Then we have got our third location up in Tannersville, Pennsylvania, uh, on the Poconos Mountain. So the Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship is located in South Bethlehem. Um, it, it, you know, I've given you a map to show you, uh, you know, where we are exactly. We are kind of right next to you know, Charter Arts High School, right next to the factory LLC. And you can pretty much say right across from Leah University as well. Uh, we are not that you know, far uh, you know, from there, about a five minute walking distance. So, one great advantage that we have there is uh, our location and the center itself. So once you, if you have never been into the Fowler Center in a building, we'd love to have you in there at any time. So when you enter the building, we have totally renovated the first floor of the building. We took about 30,000 square feet and completely renovated it. So the center resides on the first floor of the Fowler Center. You know, 
So one thing that we really have been uh, working on uh, as of late, uh, we, the center you know, designed a, a strategic plan on SOFA strategic initiatives about two years ago. And one of the things that we wanted to do was revisit our strategic plan and start looking at you know, who we are and what are some uh, things that we really you know, stand for. So I'm actually kind of like sharing with you uh, some value statements that we will be uh, bringing it out uh, to the community here pretty soon. So you are getting to uh, you know, have, a, have a peek at it uh, at the front end here and we'd love for you to you know, give us any feedback that you may have. When you hear the word entrepreneurship, most people think about starting a business. Um, we certainly think that that certainly is one component of entrepreneurship, but that's, also, that's only a very, very small percentage portion of entrepreneurship. Most people remember, most people don't start a business. That doesn't mean that they cannot be entrepreneurial in their, in their personal lives. So along with uh, you know, business startups and other factor um, that we work with, the primary uh, purpose behind the center and what we do is you know, assisting people you know, build the right mindset, what we call the entrepreneurial mindset and sets of skills, uh, which we believe can be valuable in any context. So that's our you know, main purpose uh, you know, behind the center a lot, we do all quite a bit of work you know, in, the, in that area. And, that, and as you know, that involves you know, starting a business, managing a business and growing a business. Now, at, at the core of who we are is the community. Uh, at the end of the day, the center is there for the community. Uh, most people think that you know, it's a college center, so probably our core focus is students and faculty. You're right. I mean, students and faculty are an integral part of what we do, but community is a big, big part of who we are. And, and, and then what we are. If you really look at the Fowler Center, and if you look at um, what kind of, uh, what population that we serve, the student and faculty population is pretty small of what we serve. Almost 70 to 80% of, of, our, of the population that we serve comes from the community. So especially from the center perspective, uh, you know, the community plays a big role and we wanna make sure that, you know, that, that is the case going forward uh, there's just so much, uh, you know, value in that context, and uh, you know, and we, and, and a couple of other things that we are focused on is the creativity, curiosity, opportunity, and support. So at the end of the day, you know, we are a resource center. And if you, to give you a little bit, uh, you know, history, uh, you know, on the center, um, as we were uh, putting the plans for the center together, we wanted to really focus on three critical aspects. As a community college, it is important for us to make sure that our services are very accessible, um, affordable. We try to you know, provide services at a very low cost. In some cases, uh, make it even free, uh, or there might be some minimal charge. So affordability is a big thing uh, that we always look at, accessibility. And of course, the third thing is diversity. And not only uh, of the service of what we provide, but also the types of population that we serve. And even if you look at North Hanover Community College as a whole, you know, between 40 to 45 percentage of our student population comes from the minority population. So we, you know, we have got a huge stake, um, you know, within that population. And that is also a core focus for the college as a whole right now. And that's also the focus for the center, the Fab Lab, and also, uh, you know, the Fowler Center. Give you a little bit of history on, uh, you know, uh, the center. Um, the center was established in 2018. It's a public-private partnership. Um, part of the funding for the center came from the Department of Education, about half of that, and the other half really came from private dollars and also the investment that the college really made in it. Uh, if you never had, uh, if you haven't had been to our facility yet, you certainly should. It's a wonderful state-of-the-art facility where a variety of things uh, takes place in any given semester, or any given uh, in a year. But the Fab Lab is a little bit different, you know, which is also part of the center, a big part of the center. The Fab Lab has been around for a while. And Sean, um, I put that data as 2014. You can, you can verify that uh, you know, when, you, uh, when, I, when I pass you the baton here. But the Fab Lab has been around for about seven years now. And I would also, you know, uh, it, I'll also tell you that I think the Fab Lab was a big part of the center getting built. It had a reputation, uh, it had uh, credentials, 
And those things matter, you know, when you are putting a resource like this uh, together. Some of the activities that takes place uh, inside the center, besides workshop, uh, we are partnering with SCORE, the programs that are offered through SCORE, the One Million Cup. We are in Zoom right now, but this used to be an in-person event I mean, at the center when we started it. Uh, our startup boot camp for students. Uh, we also have uh, State Senator Lisa Boscola. Uh, she has her office down there uh, providing needed services to the community. Our entrepreneur residence program, primarily external you know, in a business um, executives and other entrepreneurs that comes and spends a week uh, inside the center. And they provide mentoring to not only to uh, our local businesses, but also our students and faculty and other st stakeholders, the possibility of getting interns uh, we work with our um, internship program within the college to see if we can provide small businesses with some interns uh, as they are as they are needing and some mentoring services, right? Mentoring for not only for our students and faculty but also um, also aspiring businesses, uh, you know, that the community uh, you know has. And we are always continuously uh, you know looking to add a new program. So at the end of the day, if you really uh, you know look at it and 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 ask yourself, who are we? Uh, we are a resource center. You know, we are a resource center for the community, uh, for our students, and for our faculty. Now I'm going to pass my baton here to Sean, who's going to spend a few minutes and talk about the Fab Lab, and then we can come and wrap it up and then take any questions. Sean, so all you, buddy. All right. Thanks, Raja. Good just morning, tell everyone. To, just tell me when to go to the next slide, and I can move the slides for you. Okay, thanks. Uh, as Raja said, I'm the director of the Fab Lab here. Um, and we are a, a hidden gem in, in the South Side Bethlehem here and a great resource for everybody in the community um, and our students. So uh, the Fab Lab is about 8,000 square feet. Uh, as Raja mentioned, it was, the first floor was renovated uh, about two years ago. And I, I think the Fab Lab's actually been around since like 2012, maybe like two years before. Um, I actually took a course in 2013 of guitar building while I was at Martin Guitar. Um, but anyhow, uh, we have tons of equipment here, um, you know, the technical expertise. We have about 35 instructors that are all skilled professions in each of their fields. Uh, we offer about 150 to 190 classes per semester just in the Fab Lab alone, ranging from woodworking to 3D printing to guitar building, uh, resident mold casting. Uh, we do have some free sessions coming up as well. So if anybody has not been on tour at the Fab Lab, uh, the first Wednesday of every month, we offer free tours. Uh, you just have to sign up through our LifeLearn. I think Tony already beat me to that and uh, added that to the chat already. So thank you, Tony. Um, and as Roger mentioned, you know we're, we're one of the largest fab labs in the whole country for community colleges, and I think just fab labs in general. Uh, we have tons of um, advanced technical equipment um, and, and basic hand tools as well. Uh, next slide, please. So in the Fab Lab, um, there's ways you can get involved. Uh, generally, it's about $15 an hour to work in the Fab Lab. Uh, prices do vary um, depending on consumables being used. So if we have a welding booth as well, so if you were going to be using our welding booth, it's about $25 per hour to cover the cost of the gases. And there's different um, prices as well. We have a whole price sheet um, that we have available at uh, the Fab Lab. Our classes vary in pricing as well. So we have some classes as low as $69 as pen turning, which is a three hour class. No wood turning necessary before that. Uh, you can just come in and in three hours we teach you how to turn your own pen. We have a build your own 3D, 3D printer class as well. So that's a $400 class in six hours. Well, most of our classes are about uh, three hours in length. So like the build your own 3D printer will be two nights. And we have Acoustic Guitar One, which is a $1,400 class, which is a 30-hour class as well. So you can see our, our prices vary depending on what class you're taking. But the thing about all of our classes is whatever you make in that class, you take home with you. So even though we're teaching you the skills of how to build your own guitar, you're actually building your guitar and you're taking it home. We also offer one-on-one -on -one training. It's uh, $60 an hour, and that covers anything in the lab. So um, as I mentioned, you know, it generally is $15 to work in the lab, but you also have to be skilled on the equipment and trained on the equipment to use it. So one-on-one -on -one training is one way. If you take a class, like we have a woodworking basics class, 
if you take that class that covers basically everything in our wood shop, so then you're qualified to use the wood shop on your own. So the one-on-one -on -one training could um, suffice for if it was the class that was filled or you know it doesn't fit your time schedule, you can sign up for one-on-one -on -one training to learn a specific piece of equipment in here that you'll be able to use on your own. We also have a recording studio here. Uh, you can cut, do your own recording for podcasts, voiceovers, mixing, mastering, recording bands. So that's $25 an hour if you're using the studio on your own. If you need an engineer with you, that's $60 an hour. Uh, next slide, please. So another way to get involved with the, the Fab Lab is we have monthly memberships. So these memberships waive the hourly fees to use the lab. So the only extra cost then would be consumables being used. And you're more than welcome to bring your own materials and consumables as well. So um, you can see here, we have individual pricing for $100 a month or for a business, it's $300 a month. So the business memberships allows up to six employees for your business. You have parent-child membership, veteran and student uh, fees. So one of the great resources about us as well is, like I said, we have all this equipment here, but the knowledge of our instructors. So once you are working in the Fab Lab, you know, uh, 10 times out of 10, there's instructors roaming around here and everybody is more than generous to help out and give knowledge and help solve any kind of problems for anybody. Uh, that's a big thing for us. You know, we, we all work together here. Um, it's a great atmosphere. As Raj has said, we're open to the community. So anybody can stop in at any time. We prefer that you call ahead of time, but you know, if we are, our doors are open, but, uh, if, if you're doing prototyping, if you're starting your own business and, and you need prototyping done, we are the facility and resource to help educate and empower you to have the knowledge to do that stuff yourself. Um, for one thing, it's, you know, you know what you want to do and having the knowledge to do it yourself is just super empowering that, you know, it, it really brings on the attitude of you can tackle any kind of challenge that comes your way. And that's one thing that we really, um, embrace here at the fab lab in the cie uh, so we we encourage anybody to come down and to learn anything you need to learn for your business um any any kind of just personal hobbies um, and another thing we have too is you can see in this photo we have large format banner printers uv printers we have the sewing machines we have embroidery machines so you know, everybody needs some kind of marketing if, you, if you're starting your own business. And there's another way of, of using, utilizing the Fab Lab other than prototyping is marketing. Um, so if you have a service-based company and you need t-shirts printed or, or banners or signs, you can do that yourself here at the Fab Lab and we will train you on any of the machines so you can do it yourself. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, some new programs that we're going to start offering within the Fab Lab besides just our normal classes is that we want to um, expose the youth more to what, we what we're capable of doing at the Fab Lab and the resources in our community. Um, so typically at the Fab Lab, you have to be about 14 years old to sign up for our classes. Uh, and that's just safety reasons because there are dangerous tools here. Um, but we wanna get the youth involved from ages six to 14. So we're gonna start implementing uh, project kits that can be created and packed here at the Fab Lab. Um, it would be like a normal class you would sign up for. So parents could sign up for a class through our LifeLearn. And then you can pick up the uh, crate or package from here at the Fab Lab, the Fowler Center. Take it home. You'll have instructions and everything you need to create that project at home with your child. Um, so we, we're going to be breaking up into three different groups, probably like six to nine, nine to 12, and 12 to 14 years old. Um, so different difficulties. Uh, for the age groups and different um, kits as well. So um, that should be coming out, I would say by the summertime. So um, we're pretty excited about that and, and I hope everybody else is as well. So another um, new uh, thing that we're gonna be offering at the Fab Lab is uh, on-demand Fab Lab courses. So these are gonna be pre-filmed classes that you can purchase through our website uh, for any kind of topics that you would need. Um, so our pilot is going to be advanced wood turning by Ken Burton. So Ken Burton is one of our instructors here, a uh, well-renowned woodworker. He's been on the cover of Woodcraft, I think, five times already. He's a fabulous woodworker. He's amazing work. Um, 
but these classes were kind of um, thought about and started to create since the pandemic. You know, everything went virtual um, for everybody across the world. So this is one way we can try to reach everybody if um, they still don't feel comfortable coming out um, to our classes or, you know, even during the winter months, no, you know, no one wants to drive in the snow and ice a lot of times. So um, another program that we're gonna be implementing is an intro to the trades. So the college here, we offer a micro-credentialing program and that's also a free program for people that can sign up to learn basic manufacturing knowledge. You know, if, if anybody has a, a hard time um, finding a job, especially through the pandemic, if, if you lost your job and you're looking for a new career path, um, this is a free program you can sign up for. So the micro-credentialing is, um, it's, I think it's an eight week program. Um, there's 30 hours just in the fab lab of hands-on uh, work. And then there's also, uh, we call them 180 programming, which you're in a classroom learning all the technical information for manufacturing. So this intro to trades is going to be a new program that's a, um, a precursor to the micro credentials. So um, for signing up, this is, is basic hand tools, um, you know, how to read tape measures, uh, calipers, anything for um, safety and how to use the tools. So this intro to trades program would be another program you sign up for, and then you would graduate from that to our micro credential program. Uh, next slide, please. So this is a picture here of our, our wood shop. Um, so we have a, a, our wood shop, our, we have a metals lab, we have a plastics lab. Uh, we have, as mentioned, a recording studio. Uh, we have a laser uh, lab, a 3D printing lab, electronics lab, a graphics lab, textiles lab. <laughs> uh, we also have a finishing area too with a spray booth. So we can, and a guitar building lab as well. Um, so we can cover almost every aspect of manufacturing. Um, in the back here, we have a large red CNC machine. That's a four foot by eight foot machine. Uh, you can get trained on that and use that yourself as well. So we host different meetings here and events. Uh, as I mentioned, every first Wednesday, we have a free tour at the Fab Lab. Uh, we have also hosted birthday parties, bachelor parties. Um, we can do bachelorette parties. Um, any kind of event you want, we can host here. Uh, we have volunteers that work here at the Fab Lab as well. And then if you're looking to start your own business or just a, a social in, uh, initiative, um, you can contact us and we are more than happy to help guide you in any way we can. Um, and we also mentor our students and business owners as well. Okay, I think that was the, uh, that was the end of the slide, Sean. Okay. Okay, and just uh, to wrap up here, right, so, so one of the things that uh, you know I would like uh, for all of you to consider and keep in mind is, you know, as, as Sean talked about the variety of different programs that the Fab Lab has, the CIE spaces, you know we are always looking for ideas to collaborate and partner with. So we're always open to suggestions and see what is possible and what you know something that we have to you know what we have to work on, and that that includes um, and if you are, if you are running an existing small business from your home and you want to utilize the facility for a specific purpose, absolutely. We're very open uh, you know, to that as well. So I believe uh, that puts us in the Q&A now, uh, Matt. So I have provided uh, my email address and Sean's email address here. Uh, you can reach out to us for any question and I'll make sure that this information is also on the chat. Great, Th thank you, Raj. Um... Okay, folks, we're going to open it up to question and answer. So if you would just, if you have a question, if you could please put it in the chat screen and um, I will, uh, I will I'll certainly ask your question for you. Um, uh, be, uh, before we get started with the question and answer, I, I just want to uh, say to Sean um, and uh, Raja that, you know, I've had, I've had a good experience myself um, over at the Fab Lab. Um, my, my wife's uh, band um, has recorded in the music studio there, and Sean is just tremendously helpful. And uh, we look forward to revisiting the, the Fab Lab. And I strongly encourage, um, there's information about tours there uh, on the chat that you take one, and it may um, 
may inspire you to do something um, out of the norm and uh, try something different. Um, Thank with you, that, Matt. Uh, uh, with that, I'm going to uh, ask some questions here. Um, let's see. Okay, so I have a question here from Al Guerra. Um, how about partnering uh, with Bethlehem Area Votech? Um, yeah, so let me uh, let me let me address that. So Al, we do partner with uh, Babbitts right now. So we, for example, um, we are offering an entrepreneurial mindset course uh, for all for Babbitt students. We have been doing it for the last two and a half years right now. Uh, that course, uh, you know, in, in addition to looking at uh, some mindset act aspect of entrepreneurship also looks at design thinking. We have also brought those students, uh, you know, to the CIE space and Fab Lab to do tours and do different kinds of activities. So we are we are already engaged with, uh, you know, Babbitt's, but certainly uh, that's something that we can uh, do more. And not only with Babbitt's, we're also working with CIT up at Easton, uh, which is, you know, similar program uh, you know, as Babbitt's. Great, thank you, Raj. Um, okay, next question is from Bill Fetter. Um, how is your space different uh, than Maker's Lab? Is that, you mean like a general maker space? Is that the question? Yeah, um, I think so. Yeah, exactly. So the difference between a Maker's Lab versus what you have. I mean, I see all the equipment and it's open, but. Yeah. Right, um, no, I think that's a great question. Uh, Honestly, my, my opinion is I think that there are just two different names close to the same thing. Um, there's a the Fab Lab and Maker Spaces. They generally have same types of equipment. Um, you know, I, maybe depending on the size of a space, that might determine the difference between a Fab Lab and a Maker Space. Um, but, um, you know, definitely for us, uh, having all those different processes that I've mentioned, uh, and I think one of the unique things that we offer is that each of those processes have their own dedicated labs. So it's not just one open space where all this equipment is just in jumbled around. You know, each uh, process has its own personal lab where you can go into, there's glass windows and doors, you can see into each lab. So if you're, you know, working in the, the luthier lab building guitar and you look over and look into the metals lab, seeing somebody weld, you know, through a curtain, that's, you know, not gonna hurt your eyes. But, um, you know, it might trigger something that, oh, you know, that's something else I can learn here, you know? So that's one of the things that I like personally about our Fab Lab is you can see this different process and going on and people working and it gets this great cross-pollination of talents and skills. And, and, uh, and to add to that, uh, Bill, um, another thing that I think, well, I mean, we do offer that is a little different from a makerspace is there are structured courses uh, that we offer that are taught by, you know, uh, professionals and experts, you know, in that field. So these are not amateurs that are coming there and, you know, trying things. They have been working on this field for a while. So in a makerspace, you know, you technically don't get that. I mean, here we are talking about hundred plus, you know, courses that are, you know, taught by folks uh, that have been in that field for, uh, you know, a number of years or have run their own business or have run a, run a company. So that's also another differentiating factor. Okay, um, the next question is from Hector Bonilla. Uh, can a person bring a small tour group to show off the Fab Lab? Is there a cost to do so? Uh, yes, we actually encourage small groups and tours. Uh, there is no cost to any tour of the Fab Lab. We just ask that you call ahead uh, to schedule a tour and we would love to accommodate that. So there, oh, there's no charge for that. And we yeah. also offer private classes as well. So if you have a small group, um, say like our, a wood turning class, if you wanna come in and turn pens or turn a, a bowl, um, you know, that, that can hold up to six uh, students in that class, in that lab. So you can do small private classes as well. Yeah, and, and just to, and another thing, um, Hector, so there is no, you can tour pretty much any program in Fowler Center. There are, you know, besides the Fab Lab and the CIE, there's also other facilities there. And, you know, as long as you arrange that in advance, there's no charge, there's no cost for any of the tours, matter of fact. We highly encourage to you know bring community members, students to tour uh, to tours to you know to showcase you know what we have. So great. Um, so uh, next question is from a, a new um, a new uh, uh, joining uh, person this morning, Jay Hasker. Um, he's asking as part of our Sotel company, um, which I'll give you an opportunity to uh, talk about Jay at the end of the uh, at the end of the meeting. Um, startup. We, we have uh, several prototype designs that we want to build. Uh, what provisions are in place to help protect the intellectual property 
of our designs. Um, since we were an education facility, you know, um, we are more than happy to um, keep all intellectual property, you know, non-disclosure. So um, any forms that we can sign those, it's no problem. So we, we, when you come through the door, what's yours is yours. We just help facilitate any kind of knowledge that you would need. And that's also from the college policy. So uh, uh, another differentiating factor between a community college, let's say us and Lehigh, is when you come to us with your idea, we don't have you sign uh, in an IP agreement with us saying that, you know, we keep a percentage of that because you use our facility. We don't do that. So, uh, so you keep it, you keep all of those, uh, you know, okay, you keep all of your, um, your business is 100% intact. Let's say your idea is 100% intact, you know, with you. Um, and that's, I think, a, a tremendous advantage, especially if you are, uh, you know, thinking about starting something or you've got an idea or a product or a service that you are, that, that, that you are building. Um, okay, so the next question is from Al Guerra. Uh, by the way, folks, if, if you don't feel you, you want to um, further inquire about your question, feel free to jump in after I've asked the question. Um, okay, any thoughts about getting into things like Raspberry Pi projects? I'm not familiar with what those are, but I hope you guys yeah. do. <laughs> yes, Al, we, we do have Raspberry Pi projects at the Fab Lab. Um, we have Arduino classes, the Raspberry Pi, um, we cover robotics as well in our electronics lab. Um, one of our instructors, uh, Brian Feldman, uh, has his master's in robotics and um, owns his own business. So a lot of, I would say probably about 90% of our instructors are all entrepreneurs and, and own their own businesses. So um, they, uh, they know what it, it took for them to get to where they are. So, and, and they love spreading that knowledge, which is a great, great uh, thing for our, our uh, community. Very good. Uh, next question is from uh, Girish Sud. Um, can you elaborate on the micro credentials program? Can this be combined with job placement agencies for persons looking to qualify for different jobs with new skills? As a follow up, what type, type of micro credentials are most popular? Um, yes, yeah, so the college's program, um, they work with sponsors around the Lehigh Valley and different manufacturers. So the program combines with uh, Martin Guitar. Lutron, Vitalik, Reeb. Um, so all these different local manufacturers, um, they, they come in at the end of the program for the students and they do um, kind of like mock interviews with them. They go over the resumes uh, and then they actually do get real interviews with these, with these companies. So there is some job placement um, for these students. Uh, we cover everything from woodworking to electronics, basic soldering techniques, um, so it's, um, there, there's numerous uh, j uh, job skills that we offer into this program. So uh, yes, there is job placement. Uh, Sean, who is, who is in charge of the micro-credential? Is it Tom Barnowski? Tom Barnowski, um, but I would say probably the best person to contact would be Michelle Salkin. Yeah. Um, so I, I can, I can yeah. have um, her email available. Yeah, Girish, we can certainly provide that contact to you. Okay, uh, the next question is from Hector Benita again. Uh, do you have a conference room that can be rented out for groups with AV access? How many are permitted in a group? Okay, let me, um, let me address that. So when you really look at the list of the Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship, right? So you got two different spaces and location. You got the Fab Lab, which is on the right-hand side when you enter the building. And then you've got you know, the entrepreneurship, the training side, which is on the left-hand side. That's where all the meeting room spaces are uh, with AV um, capabilities, classrooms. So the, to answer your question, yes, absolutely. It can be rented out uh, with AV access uh, to it. Now we have also, uh, you know, so when you are um, you know, renting a, a meeting room or a meeting space, um, we also look at criteria. So we also look at your, uh, you know, what do you want to do? At the end of the day, our goal is to make it very affordable and accessible to you. So if you're a nonprofit, uh, you know, you're using it for social causes, then in some cases we have also provided those spaces at no cost, at no charge, as long as you know, it has education training component built to it. If you're a small business, if you wanna hold a meeting, you know, then that charge might be very nominal uh, of what you can do. In some cases, uh, you know, we have even provided the services pro bono, uh, depending upon what your, what your need is. 
So yes, uh, and but the thing is, these meeting rooms have to be reserved in advance. I mean, you just can't call today and say that I want a meeting room tomorrow. So you have to, you know, give us some notice um, and, and and tell us that you know what you will be in you know, utilize uh, utilize utilize it for. So we are very flexible uh, in making our space accessible to you uh, to hold meetings, to hold trainings, and any other type of activity. Uh, that you are thinking about. The only thing that we are very cautious, we are we are very cautious about, is offering, uh, let's say, financial types of services. So, so if your business or services includes selling financial products, uh, you know that's something uh, you know that we have to think over, uh, you know, before we before we say yes. Uh, so that might be the only you know exception, uh, you know, to the rule. But but uh, apart from that, we are very flexible. Great. Um, next question is from Bill Fetter. Uh, for the Intro to Votech programs, have you thought of including STEM students? As an engineer, some of my favorite engineering classes were the hands-on classes. So, uh, Bill, um, I'm um, now. The, so let me. So right now, with the Votech students at the Butler Area Vocational and Techni uh, the Technical School program, the Entrepreneurial Mindset class that we are offering. Uh, is a three credit hour class, a semester long class. So the type of students that we get in that class are from all different fields within Votech. So some of them are from engineering, some of them are from culinary program. Uh, the school selects uh, those students. Uh, it's, they have to apply to be in this program because the school pays for the tuition, you know, for that, for that class. So have we specifically, you know, um, looked at doing something with the STEM students, uh, you know, with that group, with that class no, it, it's open to anyone that, that wants to, you know, that wants to attend it. Great, thanks. Um, next question from Hector again. Uh, can a tour happen on a Saturday? Yes, yeah. Uh, the Fab Lab is open from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturdays. Great, great. Um, Next uh, question, Garish uh, again. Uh, do you offer software development like website design or app development? Um, so as, as of right now, we do not offer app development classes, but we have been talking about that. Um, we do have a computer lab. So we offer classes in SolidWorks Fusion 360. Um, so a lot of the CAD CAMs softwares um, and also the Adobe suite, graphic designing. Um, but we are looking into website design and app development. Great, great. Um, Tony, I, I see your, your message there. Um, maybe you can just share that at the end of the meeting uh, as an announcement regarding micro-credentialing. Um, Matt, can I ask a follow-up question? Sure. Yeah, so you, you have the computer lab and you said you have SolidWorks and so forth. Those software packages are very expensive. I'm just curious, um, could you could somebody come in and do some design on on SolidWorks because maybe another package that I have that's cheaper doesn't have the same capabilities? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So we are open to the community, um, as like Raj has said that you don't have to be enrolled in our college to use the facility. Um, so we are community based as well, and um, you can come in and use the lab for fifteen dollars an hour. And I think our computer labs actually gets five dollars an hour. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah, just I just want to um, um, you know reemphasize uh, you know what just Sean said. A big difference between a four-year public and private college and us is accessibility. You know we uh, we are we do it, we do an incredible amount of work with the community. We want the community to be there because we keep on getting the question. Okay, what can I do? You know, if I'm not if I'm if I'm not a student at Northampton Community College, students or faculty. Can I have access to that building and access to the facility? And the simple answer is yes, you can. You know, but you just you know, you, you also have to inform us of what you want to do. There are some certain things that we certainly would you know like to make sure uh, that we can help you. You know what your needs are. But as far as accessibility and getting in the building, um, absolutely. Um, this is for us not only for our students or faculty, but for you as a community um, as well. And as I mentioned um, before, our, we sell the memberships as well. So, you know, if you're if you're planning to spend over 20 hours in our computer lab, buying a hundred dollar membership for the month, you know, you're already saving money. So, Sean, how many businesses? I because we also have businesses that are that have got business membership in the Fab Lab and running their business, right? Yeah, we have um, two right now, two business okay. memberships. This Factory LC is one of them. 
if you think about it for $300 a month, you know, you have access to, you know, all the equipments, uh, you know, and if you really have to spend that, you know, uh, investment, uh, I mean, that's going to be, you know, a lot more than $300 a month. So and it's a great opportunity to, to test the equipment out of, you know, if you're thinking about buying a CNC machine, you know, you come down here, you, you learn how to use the equipment, um, use the actual piece of equipment that we have here might be able to determine of what you want to purchase your own business. Very or if good. that machine can handle the capabilities that you want. Okay, um, we have time for one more question, and then um, we're going to introduce uh, some new some, some new folks here today. Um, Algira, uh, can we do video production as well as audio production? Um, we are getting into video production right now, um, just starting, so we don't have any classes offered in that. Uh, we're looking into getting green screens as well, um, but. Hopefully in the near future, we will be offering video production. Okay, and, and just one more question. Um, do you have kitchen design programs, uh, 2020 and chief architect? Um, the, the programs that we offer here, we have uh, SketchUp and we also offer Revit um, software. Great, great.